By the late 1930s, Germany had built up a sizable fleet of bombers, but technology was rapidly advancing, and the aircraft rolling off production lines were starting to fall behind the times. Engineers at Junkers had been toying with the idea of a next-generation bomber that could meet these new challenges, but real progress only came with the launch of the ambitious Bomber B competition in mid-1939. The goal was to develop a fast, modern bomber to replace the aging Junkers 88 and Dornier 17. Expectations for the new aircraft were high. It needed to reach speeds of over 600 kilometers an hour, carry up to 4,000 kilograms of bombs over long distances, feature a pressurized cockpit for high-altitude flight, and have a powerful, remotely-operated defensive armament. The program drew interest from Germany's leading aircraft manufacturers, but it was Junker's design that stood out as the most promising. Unfortunately, from the outset, the Junkers 288 faced a major issue that would haunt the project throughout its development the lack of suitable engines. The aircraft had been designed around the new Junkers Yumo 222 or 223 engines, each capable of producing around 2,500 horsepower at takeoff. But their complicated design caused serious reliability problems that engineers never managed to fully solve. The first prototype, the U-288 V1, had to settle for less powerful BMW 801 engines. It made its maiden flight in January 1941 and performed reasonably well, but clearly needed more powerful engines. Later prototypes were tested with a variety of engine setups, including twin crankcase DB610s, which had problems of their own. Not only were they extremely heavy, but they'd already earned a reputation for poor reliability on the Heinkel 177. Testing dragged on. Each new prototype brought new issues. Even when engineers were finally able to install the UMO 222s, they constantly overheated or failed outright. Internal systems, like the overly complex landing gear, caused further headaches. The team kept modifying the design to fix what they could. Meanwhile, the military kept changing its requirements, from weapon configurations to fuselage shape, leading to longer, heavier wings that further increased weight and strain on the already overburdened engines. A total of 22 prototypes were built in various configurations. Each one represented a fresh attempt to get the design just right. Some managed to hit impressive speeds, nearly reaching 670 kilometers an hour, but reliability issues remained unresolved. In the end, the U-288 never made it into mass production. The few that were built were used only for test flights, and according to some sources, a handful may have seen limited use on the Eastern Front near the end of the war. By 1943, it was clear that the UMO 222 would never become the success many had hoped for. At the same time, no other engine could meet the aircraft's performance needs without major trade-offs in reliability or other critical areas. With Germany's military situation growing worse and pressure mounting to focus resources on proven designs, the Bomber B program, and with it, the U-288, was shut down for good. In many ways, the U-288 was way ahead of its time, packed with innovative features and serious potential. Had its technical hurdles been overcome, it might have posed a serious threat to the Allies. But it also stands as a cautionary tale of what happens when ambition outruns engineering, and when shifting goalposts and unresolved technical flaws make even the most promising project into a tragic failure.